Rings of Power news has been popping off, with it ranging from the bizarre to the delusional to the downright moronic. Deezer says that the reality is that we have created a world that is now accessible to those who it wasn't before. Because Tolkien has always been accessible to anyone. We changed it to make it accessible when it was always accessible. If you can make that make sense, you're a better person than me. I think the technical term for this is talking out of both sides of your mouth. I've got an idea that I want to push, but I also don't want to offend everyone living in reality. So I'm going to say both contradictory things and just hope nobody notices. Oh yes, have we got some good ones for you today. We start with something that I never thought I'd see on the internet and honestly don't quite know how to take it. When it comes out that the Rings of Power is basically Cats the Musical. And no, she won't be accepting criticism at this time. It also comes with this picture, which I simultaneously think is horrific and pure gold. But either way, I had to see it and now, so do you. We can all revel in its glory. <laughs> Honestly though, it's like Alron's a natural. But apparently, despite the fact that Rings of Power is meant to include significant historical incidents, it also includes startling parallels to an infamous piece of feline-themed musical theatre. And honestly, if you can't picture Celebrimbor bursting into song and giving us a dance number as Alron talks about the size of his massive hammer, then I don't think we're watching the same show. And let's face it, it's not outside the realms of what Amazon would actually be willing to do. But no, apparently, returning to Valinor, is a clear metaphor for dying. Despite the fact that jumping into the ocean was deemed by Galadriel to be certain death. No, it's definitely returning to paradise, which is death. But let's be honest with ourselves. We all know what's going on here. Returning to Valinor is clearly a jellical ball. And the video they post includes a scene where they're sniffing a dirty toilet, which Let's face it, it's probably the most fitting analogy to Rings of Power I've seen in an article. But for those likely happier souls who are blessedly unfamiliar with the musical, let me enlighten you. Everyone wants to go on a journey, a metaphor for dying, and there's one big guy in charge who decides who goes. But the reason I wanted to show you this article was for this big brain piece of logic which I think everybody needs to be told in their life. This will enhance your very being on this planet. A cat is not a dog, and an elf is not a hobbit. But, from a certain point of view, an elf may be a jellical cat. Hey, if you think that's bad, you've not seen the size of the brains in the upcoming articles. Rings of Power can dress up its rights in fancy clothes and spout eloquent prose. You can accuse Rings of Power of many things, but having eloquent prose most certainly isn't one of them. Until Middle-earth enters the Fourth Age but it cannot hide its true nature. It may be upsetting, you probably wish to deny it, but I know a jellical ball when I see one. I don't know who you are, Amanda Eo, but I think you've written the single most glorious article on Rings of Power that I have read in the last six months. Shout out to Mashable's art team for honoring this extremely unhinged art request. <laughs> And I thought I was going to contrast that with something more serious, but I thought, no, let's just continue straight into the moronity, shall we? Let's just continue down the whirlpool of hell. Do you remember this article? The hobbits are filthy, hungry simpletons with stage Irish accents. That's one billion dollars well spent. Yes, the Irish Times wasn't happy at their portrayal in Rings of Power, and it seems as if they've gotten someone's attention. Because it got them an interview with the showrunners and they were very apologetic. Why are the Harfoots hungry simpletons with stage Irish accents? We ask the showrunners themselves. JD Payne and Patrick McCain explain what they were trying to do, because it sounds like they don't think they succeeded. When the series debuted, many Irish viewers thought it was caricaturing the Irish people. But a moment of silence descends before J.D. Payne and Patrick McKay respond. You could almost hear a Silmaril drop as the Irish Times asked the showrunners. Oh my gosh, I hope not. My family is from Ireland. I can't believe you went there. Twitter keeps saying that's not an excuse. What are you going to use next? You've got an Irish butler. I've been to Ireland many times. My wife is from Donegal. Not familiar with Twitter, are you? Yes, apparently that's not an excuse either. I mean, when you have weaponized this line of attack against the fans yourself, and have therefore come up with a load of bad faith attacks against their legitimate defenses, it turns out when you use them yourself, those defenses can't really be used for you either, could they? No, I have such strong roots to Ireland. What we were trying to do is come up with regional accents across different worlds. And the Irish people should know that if you're offended by Rings of Power, you shouldn't be. 
because they don't just offend the Irish. Oh no, no, they go for the Scottish people as well. We just use the Scottish accents. It's certainly not intended to reference Scottish people. I mean, why would anyone think that the people inside Rings of Power were actually meant to represent anyone in the real world? I mean, this is a fantasy world entirely separate from our real world. It's only meant to reference Tolkien's world. Why would anyone think it was meant to represent the real world in any way, shape or form? Well, apart from the executive producer Lindsay Webber, specifically saying that it felt only natural to us that Tolkien's work would reflect what the world actually looks like. And I think we could put a lot of emphasis on what the world actually looks like. So obviously, when they start putting the Irish into the world as hobbits, this is what Rings of Power think that the Irish actually look like. So welcome to J.D. Payne and Patrick McKay's vision of the Irish, which considering as he's put them as hobbits, which are objectively the most evil people in the entire show, I find incredibly repulsive and I can fully understand why the Irish Times would think so as well. But don't worry because they've not just offended the Irish and the Scottish, no they were also inspired by various different parts of the British Isles. For instance, they've also adapted various other parts of Northern England, like Manchester. Yeah, Manchester is just like the Southlands. It's medieval huts with mud and grime and chickens in the yard. And I fully agree with the Irish Times when they say it's nothing else but stereotyping. Because JD Payne and Patrick McKay, oh, they can say that that's certainly not how it's intended. It's not where we're coming from. This is a different world and is in no way meant to reference real people. But this is the same show which is also published. If you can see it, you can be it and told us how important representation is to them and specifically said that Rings of Power as an adaptation of Tolkien is specifically designed to reflect what the world actually looks like. And so you're going to have to forgive me if I just trust what your executive producer has actually said in the interviews that the Southlands in medieval huts covered in mud, grime and chickens is Manchester. That whatever happens to the dwarves and however you stereotype them, well, they're just the Scottish. And that Harfoots as hungry simpletons are definitely how you stereotype the Irish over at your Rings of Power studios. You're the ones that said you were reflecting the real world, not anyone else. And now, yeah, you made your bed and you're gonna have to sleep with it. And if you don't want to, maybe you should start rolling back all of those other horrible discriminatory comments that you've been making for, I don't know, the last six months. It's interesting how you would have had none of these problems and wouldn't have needed to do an apology interview if you'd actually just stuck to what was in Tolkien's world. It's almost as if Tolkien was nothing like how the press have been describing him and actually you should have, I don't know, stuck to the law. And that it's you which are actually causing all of the problems with it. And this is where we get one of the most unintelligible comments that I've seen in an article. And I still quite frankly don't understand it, so if you do, let me know in the comments below. Because Deza says, the reality is that we have created created a world that is now accessible to those whom it may not have been, or those who felt it may not have been. Because Tolkien was always accessible to everybody. How do you have a world that was always accessible to everybody, but you also create a new world which only now is accessible to different people? even though it was accessible to them all along. You seem to have created a contradictory circle of hell. If it was accessible to everybody, then you didn't need to create a world that was changed from its original thing, because it was always accessible to everybody, which would be the reality of the situation. But Amazon thought they needed to change Tolkien to make it accessible for those whom it wasn't before, even though it always was. And the only way I can make this make sense is if we say it's those who felt it wasn't accessible. You know, those people who can only identify with people who who have the same biological characteristics as themselves. Narcissists. Honestly, that's not really an entertainment demographic that I would be appealing to myself, but, you know, maybe Rings of Power want to corner the market on that regard. Who am I to argue? And I do love this next comment. I think people debating Tolkien and the choices that people have made, that's all great. I'm sure people are going to have loads of conversations. Ultimately, when you tell a story, that's what you want. But, it's speech that's completely different. And we give no examples, no specifics, no particular kind of conversations that we've seen going on in the world. No, what we're going to do is just throw up some kind of vague miasma over all of the criticism of the show and leave people to, I don't know, make up their own articles and just claim all of this is happening. And there's a reason for that, because if we were specific, if we did actually point to the things that we specifically don't like, then that would also mean that people could investigate what we meant when we use these kind of descriptions. That way the press can come out with articles that just vaguely condemn all criticism of the show 
rather than simply discuss the exact specifics that we should be including in this article. I'm sorry, Amazon, that your Twitter account got a DM from somebody who was a complete lunatic, but I do question whether the odd DM was really worth an entire Irish post quote. And this entire interview is Amazon panicking. They realize what they did. They realize that they have actually made all of the people look absolutely repulsive in their show because they wanted it to reflect the real world, and this is how they see the real world. Rings of Power isn't Tolkien's world. It's not a fantasy world anymore. To J.D. Payne and Patrick McKay, it's apparently a reflection of what the world actually looks like. So I can fully understand why the Irish Times would find that incredibly repulsive. And this interview must have been some kind of panicked response. They saw the original actually review, which was absolutely scathing in filthy, hungry simpletons. And they realized they had to say anything. But really, it wasn't very convincing, was it? Even to the Irish Times, for an Irish person, particularly an Irish Tolkien fan, Watching Rings of Power can be like riding a very wonky roller coaster. You can luxuriate in the thrill of returning to Middle Earth, but then along come the Harfoots, like escapees from Darby O'Jill and the Little People, or an episode of Star Trek The Next Generation featuring Irish aliens. I really wish they'd given an episode reference so I could look that one up. And suddenly, everything is flipped and we're dangling upside down the object of the joke. Are we to grin and bear it? Or perhaps, just watch House of the Dragon instead. Forget about the whereabouts of the Dark Lord Sauron and the forging of the One Ring. This is the conundrum that Irish devotees must wrestle with in the weeks ahead. The conundrum that must be wrestled with is do you want to watch Rings of Power, the one which thinks the Irish are filthy, horrible, evil people? What Amazon see as a reflection of what the world actually looks like, or... Do you just want to watch House of the Dragon and kind of forget that Rings of Power exists along with their incredibly discriminatory stereotypes of the Irish, people from Manchester, and the Scottish? Oh yeah, the showrunners say that Rings of Power should reflect what the world actually looks like until you get to the British people and then suddenly everyone is evil, filthy, and stupid and we're just supposed to think this is a fantasy world all of a sudden. Well, I'm sorry, but you can't really have your cake and eat it, can you? Either you want Rings of Power to reflect what the world actually looks like, or this is a fantasy world which has nothing to do with the real world, and in fact, it's Tolkien's world and should remain Tolkien. In which case, your casting shouldn't be what it is. Seems like the showrunners have discovered one of the problems with literally just saying whatever you think you need to in interviews. If your ideas don't come from a position of principle, if they don't have a stable foundation and you're just basically going to lie to people because you think your audience are stupid, uh, you end up contradicting what you've just said, and eventually, even the corporate press will call you on it. You know those corporate press types, don't you? Like the ones from The Guardian. The ones who think that fantasy fans are the absolute worst. Or that people complaining about other parts of the show is simply a lot of fuss, which has even overtaken the actual show itself to the point where you can barely summon the energy to actually watch the thing anymore. Or is that just the author? And may I kindly suggest to the author that the reason you probably can't summon the energy to actually watch the thing anymore is actually because the show's not very good. Because it's written poorly, its characters are horrible, but most of all, it's so boring. She-Hulk not only has shorter episodes, but it has more happen in each individual episode than an entire hour of Rings of Power. I would rather watch an episode of She-Hulk than Rings of Power, because even though it's bad, it's nowhere near as boring. And words like slow, slow burn, and boring, to me, are the worst descriptors of entertainment, because it means you failed in the one and only reason for your existence. To be entertaining. So no, the reason why you can barely summon the energy to actually watch the thing is more than likely because you want to fall asleep. But that's not the end of the Big Brain Takes for this article. No, we have got an intellectual behemoth coming up, which I don't think you'll even be able to match in sheer capacity. A screen rant says that the Rings of Power viewership numbers prove that audience ratings are entirely useless. That Rings of Power posted huge debut numbers despite reviews not being very good. And that apparently means that reviews are useless for some reason, which I still can't work out why. Because after it garnered mostly positive reviews from critics, which in no way had anything to gain from their reviews at all in any way, shape or form, and certainly weren't given prior access to the piece and wanted to continue 
that access. It got negative reviews from the audience, and Amazon suspended their audience review system. And even since they've opened it up, those reviews are, um, curated? To a point where the result of those reviews seems to be remaining largely the same. But Screen Rant seemed under the opinion that those reviews and the backlash come from a very small segment of the audience, and that that's proved somehow by the fact that we got 25 million viewers in the first 24 hours, according to Amazon. And that somehow this proves that the show is a massive success because it's been blazing through the poor reviews. And look, I don't want to be mean or condescending in any way, but I do just want to pose the question of how do you expect people to review a show if they've not watched it. It kind of feels like that's one of the central most important things about reviewing a show, is actually having seen the show in the first place. So please tell me how massive viewership numbers prove that audience ratings are useless, when all of those audience ratings have to come from people that viewed it first. Your premiere numbers when you release a show mean nothing. All it shows is hype before a show and the sort of inherent value that you have with an IP that the IP is so important to people that they will give it a try on its very first episode. And then, after they've seen it, you get their opinion on it, which is where the audience ratings come from. So obviously, if you get a load of people reviewing a thing, you're also going to get a large number of viewers, because it will always be less people reviewing a show than viewed it in the first place. Just like it is on YouTube that less people will comment and like a video than actually watched it. Hey, that might have been the best subtle reminder to get you to do it that I've actually put in a video. But that's what all of these articles are. They're just disingenuous attempts to try and spin a narrative. Like if these same audience members reviewed the show without actually watching it, then they'd complain about that as well. Your premiere numbers mean nothing. It's how much you retain those viewers throughout the rest of the series that actually matters, because those are the people that like the show, because they continue to spend their valuable time watching it. The press may think that fantasy fans are the absolute worst, or that the viewers are so stupid that they don't know when a show is actually taking the piss out of them, because it's reflecting how J.D. Payne and Patrick McKay see them in the real world. The corporate media is so obsessed with trying to come out with stories which are all angled towards a certain thing, to make sure that they get the right clicks, to make sure that they stay on the right side of history. That quite frankly, out of all of the opinions that I've shown you in this video, the one which I think makes the most sense, the one I think is the most honest, is the one which thinks Rings of Power is basically Cats the Musical. Because at least this was entertaining. At least this was a writer, obviously, knowingly, poking fun at it and taking the piss. And I can respect someone who writes an article knowing that their requests are entirely unhinged than someone that tries to pretend that the opinions of fans are entirely useless simply because they watched the show in the first place. Or showrunners that got caught in a lie of their own making desperately trying to backtrack on what they've said before because people remembered what they actually said. This everything in Rings of Power is simply a reflection of what the world actually looks like, says Lindsay Webber, executive producer of the series. That's not a standard I made, that's one you set. Right at the beginning when you revealed the very first show, this is what you're so proud of. You made your bed, and now you've got to lie in it. And quite frankly, I find it incredibly difficult to disagree with the Irish Times who find your entire show offensive. But those are just my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know down in the comments below. Like the video if you like the video. Subscribe. More videos like this in the future. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.